Let's talk about the workflow for creating a queue or a batch using V-Ray. So V-Ray is really powerful, but uh, creating a queue in V-Ray can be a little uh, difficult. Now, once you know the workflow, it's actually pretty simple. It's just an unusual way to create a, a queue. Um, so the first thing to notice is in V-Ray, queue is not a thing. It's not called a queue, it's called a batch. So it's called a batch because typically when you create an animation, you would batch all of the renderings for your animations. Uh, you can sit there and press render for each of the frames. So instead, you create your animation and you render everything at once by running the batch. So what it allows you to do is um, not have to wait between renderings, right? So this is where you would find it. It's under V-Ray, V-Ray rendering batch render and the way i like to use uh, the batch to create a queue is by exporting a v-ray scene and what this does is it allows you to select a view so in this case we're on perspective three and we can save everything that is set here which means all of the settings in v-ray um, that includes the resolution of the image and the settings that you're using. So if you're saying uh, you're using the, the best high quality settings or the lowest settings, whichever settings you pick, um, they will they will be saved as part of the V-Ray scene. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. You can have uh, multiple um, multiple V-Ray scenes within your batch with different resolutions and different settings. Um, but we're not going to talk too much about that. Um, we're going to talk more about uh, how I typically use it. So um, let's talk about the workflow here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is set up a safe frame. Uh, the reason why you want a safe frame is, um, first of all, let's apply a safe frame that's under uh, render and show safe frame. Here it is. Uh, you can also find it here under the properties. If you don't select anything, and you just go to your properties tab, uh, you have this thing here called safe frame. Uh, you also have your settings for your uh, viewport, so you could change the camera settings if you wanted to. Um, but so this is really useful because it shows you where it will cut um, the, the image. So basically the viewport is really, really wide. You'll see that on the left and the right side, this will not be rendered, and anything within the yellow box will be rendered. Um, so pretty straightforward, but really useful if you have an object that's, uh, um, you know, a different format than your viewport, uh, which is very usual because, you know, uh, you have different monitor sizes and proportions, and maybe your your render image is a completely different uh, format. So. Um, let's move forward and let's talk about the actual workflow. So you've got your safe frame. Um, another thing you'll want to do is enable the named position and the named viewport. Um, and if you don't see them here as part of your toolbar, um, like I just did it, uh, you could click on this gear and um, you could add them. So if I click here, it removes it. If I click again, named position, uh, it adds it back to um, to this panel. Now, if you don't have any panels here, you can also go to the tools and uh, and just add add some toolbars and everything. Um, actually, that's not typically how you do it, do it though. Uh, typically, you would just go to properties. Um, but in this case, I don't need to do that. Um, so yeah, one example would be materials. If you just type in materials then you'll have materials that pops up. But now because it is within my um, my panel, uh, it just shows up here. But um, if you didn't have it here, then it would pop up as a window and you could dock it uh, back into that uh, into that panel. So um, that's really useful. So you, you absolutely want that. You want your materials to be here. Uh, you want your views, the named views, um, and the named positions. So name views are really important because what you can do is uh, set up your view, double click on a view, and you can see it remembers the view I had. So if I wanted to add another view as part of this batch, I would just save it, call it whatever I want, uh, perspective four, 
And it remembers that this is perspective four. Now this is the same view as perspective two, so it's not really useful, but um, you know, if we wanted to use the right view, uh, we could save that, call it the right view, and here it is. So now we can quickly toggle between the different views. So that's really useful. Um, so now the next step would be uh, exporting this, all right? Um, so let's say we want to, to export perspective one, two, and three. We can go under Vire, and we go up here, um, rendering export Vire scene. So I'm under the perspective view, so this is what it would render. And uh, now I can add it to my batch. So I can save it here and then uh, add the file to the batch. Um, the batch. Yeah. Um, so I will speed up the process. I don't want to waste your time. Uh, before I move on, I'm going to talk about the settings. Uh, in this case, because we are creating a batch, we will be using CPU. And uh, so typically the way I do that is I expand this window here that has a few additional options. Um, and I would do a quick test rendering. So what I like to do is click on the camera, um, look at your settings, everything looks normal, and then look at your render output. We will use uh, this resolution, which is exactly half of the standard HD resolution. Uh, we can also log the aspect ratio, so that's good. And uh, we can toggle the safe frame here as well. So that's really useful. Um, so now we have all of the settings set up, but I always like to do a quick um, quick render to make sure your setting is under the rendering and not the preview. And it looks like it's going to give us the right results. Um, so make sure you do test your, uh, your rendering before you add it to the batch. Um, otherwise, you might get some unexpected results. Um, so in this case, we're using the regular rendering setting uh, with a resolution that is half of the standard HD resolution. Okay, so that looks good. Let's uh, close this and let's use some very fast settings. Since this is just a demo, I will just use medium um, and we will use the denoiser. Um, I like the NVIDIA one, but you can use the V-Rates. They're both really good. Uh, basically, what they do is they make sure that there's not as much grain on your images. Um, so yeah, these are the settings I will be using. So let's close this, make sure we're under the correct view, and we can export each of the files. Um, now, another thing I should mention is there's a very easy way to do this. Uh, you can go under Vire Render Export, and uh, we can save it as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you know, uh, call it whatever makes sense to you. Um, but here, instead of going back to Render and going back, or Vire, Vire rendering, uh, export Vire scene, we can just press enter again and it will run the same command again, right? Um, so let's change the view, press enter, and we can say, okay, this is V0.2. Save. And press enter again and you can save uh, 0.3. Save. Um, now, one thing that's concerning here is I don't see the files, so I'm not sure why the extension is not showing up. Uh, that's unusual. Um, so let me see if it recognizes the file type. Um, maybe it's because of a point, if you add a point one. Um, that's very strange. Yeah, it looks like adding a point actually messed it up. So if I do an underscore, let's see what it does. So this would be the third one, save, press enter again. Yeah, so apparently if you do 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.01, it thinks that here you're inputting the extension, which is not the correct extension because the extension is called that vire scene. Um, so that's interesting, I, I just caught that. Uh, I've never run into this issue before. Um, so make sure you don't have a point at the end of, um, of your naming convention. Um, now, the file should be fine, so if I go back up here and just make sure that the extension is there, that should work completely fine. Mm -hmm. 
So there it is. We've got uh, three different views all set up, um, but that's not really it's not really useful, right? If you wanted to do only three views, um, you could just wait in between the renderings. Um, but so one of the advantage here is that you can also change the positioning. And so that's why this workflow is really powerful um, because now I can change the positioning and show the same view with these, um, this alternative position. Uh, but not just that, you can also um, change the materials. So if I go up here and I change the material, the material will also remain as part of this uh, as part of this V-Res scene. So it lets you change whatever you want. Uh, you can change the views, the materials, uh, the rendering settings. Um, so let's do it as a test. Uh, let's change the materials to uh, something really simple like a plastic that is white. Okay, apply this to all of the selections and let's go through the same process again just go through perspective one and um, we can do a right click here and get back to the V-Ray export V-Ray scene um, and we will call it um, 1B now the naming convention really doesn't matter uh, it's, it's whatever you want it to be you can you can call it A, B, C you know whatever makes sense to you um, I like to keep it really simple with just numbers um, and sometimes adding letters, uh, like in this case. Um, okay, so once you're done setting up all of your views with all of your materials, uh, what you're going to want to do is go under V-Ray, V-Ray rendering, and you're going to want to create a batch. So now we have the files, but we haven't added the files to the batch. So let's click here to open the files and let's find this folder, which is up here. Paste it, oh, uh, paste press enter and it doesn't see anything. It doesn't see anything because it's a Rhino file 3DM and that's not what we're using. We're using a V-Ray scene and these are the scenes that we want to render. So I would just select everything, press open. Now you have a batch with all of the scenes that you uh, created and again it's going to remember the materials, the view and um, the different settings that you set within each of the scenes. Um, so that's how I would set up a queue. Okay, so the queue is done. It rendered everything, um, but as it was rendering, I realized that I forgot to mention a couple of things. Uh, one of them is where it saves the image. Um, so here it doesn't even tell you where it saves it. Um, and so typically what I do is click on this gear here, which is the settings for the batch. And you can choose to override the path. And so you can force it to be a specific file type and uh, save it at a specific location, you know, so you can choose the folder where you want to save it. Um, so I forgot to do that, so I'm not even sure where the images are saved, uh, but that's okay, I can, I can figure that out very easily. Um, but yeah, it, it's very important to make sure that you use the settings to force the location of your um, saved files, um, or just make sure that when you do save it, within your settings, you can also set up um, you can set up a path to where it is saved. And that's going to be up here under, um, it should be under here somewhere. Um, yeah, uh, it's up here. Oh wait, no, this is, this is not the rendering setting, it's the uh, CUDA setting. Um, so we have to use the regular setting, stop and as a, as a rendering, it gives you this additional option to use a render output um, under the, um, I don't even know what this is called, the interactive, under the interactive mode, uh, you cannot have a file output. So um, yeah, so make sure you go under the render with V-Ray, um, use that option first, and then uh, this will allow you to have a render output, and with your render output, you can save the file 
uh, as a specific location. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. Either you want to use this option and have that as part of your uh, VRS scene within your patch, or you will want to override the, uh, the output and the location of, of your image. So it looks like the renderings actually went to the same, uh, the same place where I had the batch files. So I guess by default, if you don't set a, a location for uh, for your renderings, it will go to the same folder where you saved the, the rest scene. Um, and um, there's one last thing I forgot to mention. When you create a batch, uh, you will most likely get multiple images. Uh, and these images are used for processing the image. Uh, and that's also because I used a denoise setting. And so the denoise setting is really useful because um, if you look at the regular rendering, which I believe it's this one, the one that has the actual name, uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, grain, there's a lot of noise in the image. Um, and so it, it does this thing where it looks at the image and it figures out how to get rid of some of that noise. Um, and here you have two additional images. One is called the denoiser and the effect result. Um, so if you go to the effect result, you have this final image. And if you go to the previous one, you'll see that it's essentially the same image. So one of them is um, removing the noise, and the other one is the final image, which in this case is exactly the same. Uh, but if you added special effects, um, I think there's cam camera effects you can add. Um, so then they would be different, and the denoiser image would uh, would not be the same as the final effect because you would have added an additional effect on top of a denoise. Um, so in this case, the one we want is the uh, effects result, but the denoiser would be the same exact image. So um, in most cases, you will want this one that says effects or results. Um, so yeah, in this case, I can delete everything else. Yeah, so that's the last part, the last detail I wanted to bring up. Um, so make sure that you set a path to where you save these images, because if you don't, uh, you will end up with this, which it's not very well organized. Um, but that's OK. I think you probably have a much better idea on how to do this. And I hope this gives you a better sense on how to create a queue in V-Ray uh, using the, uh, the batch.